This is a collaboration that we have with New Story. This is the first community in the world that can pay their mortgages through Bitcoin. Together with Renato, we had a training where we showed people, you know, this is how we are going to pay. It. These are the wallets that are your disposal. And this is our platform, BitRefill. Only 30% of the population here in Salvador have access to a bank account. Now, with the Bitcoin law, everybody has an access to a bank account, you know, and there are so many services right now that you can do through Bitcoin. We are live here from Bitcoin Beach, and I'm thrilled to have Rodrigo from BitRefill. Uh, BitRefill's been one of the companies that's been instrumental in uh, Bitcoin adoption here in El Salvador since the very beginning. And as we've expanded and are working with other circular economies around the world, it's BitRefill that always keeps coming up uh, in conversations about the way that people are, are using Bitcoin in real ways. And so... Um, Thrilled to, to hear from Rodrigo, learn a bit about his background. Uh, he was mentioning before that he was a, a diplomat, so he's uh, that was his prior life. So he has he understands uh, how to navigate the the political field, and now it's great to have him in the Bitcoin space. So yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about your history, where you grew up, um, you know, your history with El Salvador, those sorts of things. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Uh, no, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I've uh, enjoyed coming, you know, and seeing how Bitcoin Beach and El Sonte is growing, mostly thanks to the work that you are doing and so forth and uh, the work that we are doing together. So, yeah, it's a pleasure to see, you know, now after the second year running of adopting Bitcoin, for example, to see, you know, the, how it spreads around the world. The idea of uh, El Sonte and Bitcoin Beach is amazing. Uh, back to my background, I was born in El Salvador. Uh, many, many years ago, almost five decades ago. Uh, I think we might have the same age. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, well, we don't have to, we don't have to <laughs> disclosure <laughs> that. <laughs> I think you've aged better than me. You look younger, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know about that. So, but um, 11 years old, my mom decided to move to Sweden where I lived for, uh, for several decades. And there I went to university and I started working as a diplomat for the, when our embassy opened there many, many years ago as well. And then some years later, I moved to Moscow to continue my work as a diplomat. That uh, ended two years ago when I moved back to El Salvador. I figure I had never lived in El Salvador as a grown up. And we also had some, uh, some land here that I wanted to construct a house and I wanted to see how it was to live here in El Salvador. That's, I think, the flash version of uh, everything that's been going on. So you're you're learning the uh, the pitfalls of uh, building in a place where you get a uh, hundred inches of rain a year. Uh, yeah, we were discussing earlier your your roof leaks, and uh, <laughs> it's, but it's a small price to pay to live here in paradise. So. It is kind of a small price to pay, actually. I can disclosure that one of the I think that the the roof is very creative because sometimes it leaks in different places. <laughs> and this last time it wasn't even raining. It was because one of the air conditionings was leaking. So what this resulted in it was that my COO's computer was flooded. Oh. So this was like this created a little. So no, so things happen all the time here, even when it's not raining. Well, hope, hopefully you get that uh, ironed out. Is is that uh, is that common for them to put people in diplomatic positions that? are already in the country i mean you, so you weren't recruited from el salvador you were no that that's a that's a very good question and and you are completely correct people are usually sent out uh, the thing was that i was living in sweden at the time i was just finishing my studies from university and the ambassador arrived freshly without you know, knowing so much about the country, this was a new direction for, for El Salvador to try to, because in Sweden, Sweden is one of the countries where we have the most Salvadorians at the time. At some time we had around 5,000, which is of course really? nothing. Yeah, 5,000, which is nothing compared to the 
have millions in the U.S. But, but, but that's still more than I would have thought it for, is. for a small country like no, that. No, it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, during the Civil War here in El Salvador, uh, there were some countries that opened up the doors for people that wanted to move. And Sweden was one of them. Sweden, Australia, Canada were the biggest one, but most of the people moved actually to, well, lots of people moved to Sweden. So, okay. yeah, so at the time, I, you know, I, since I was brought up in Sweden, I spoke fluent Swedish. So, yeah, the ambassador that came at the time, uh, his name was uh, Byron Larius. He actually passed away this year. He was, uh, it was, yeah, of course, a big blow because he had such an important part uh, in my life in giving me that direction for my former career and so forth. And the destiny made it that he had kids that were about my age. So we had this close relationship, you know, because he knew exactly how to handle me yeah. because just like another kid, <laughs> you know, let another one of his kids. So, yeah, so that's why he thought it was a good idea to actually uh, hire me. So that's how the, my diplomatic career started. Nice. And then, and then you went from there to another cold place, Russia, and uh, yeah, the transition wasn't that difficult, you know, because people say, "Oh, you moving to Moscow? It's so cold! It's so cold!" But it was actually exactly the same weather as in Stockholm, so it wasn't really. I yeah, I think it's about the same latitude. It is. Yeah. It is. You know, the Swedes they have this uh, saying. They it's in Swedish. It rhymes. It doesn't in Spanish or in English. It's uh, the Finns inget dåligt väder, bara dåliga kläder, which means there are no bad weather, only bad clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so you learn to live with I that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. And uh, so, how did you make the move to to bit refill? Did that? Were you specifically looking for something in the Bitcoin space, or did it have anything to do with the law being passed here, or uh, both? Actually, I think that when the when the law passed, this caused some. Uh, attention in Sweden, where the company BitRefill is, was founded in Sweden. The founders, the th all three of them are Swedish, even if now we are a global company, we have, I think people, we just, I just came back, um, I think some days ago, yeah, Wednesday, I came back from Costa Rica, where we had, uh, we call it the Bonanza, we meet, uh, since we have people in, I think, 22, 23 different countries, then it's important to meet with certain regularity, you know, to connect um, otherwise we always only see each other you know on google meet which is not the same not yeah. quite the same you know so we do this twice a year uh, in june we were in stockholm and now we were in costa rica in a beautiful place called manuel antonio which i can really recommend um and uh, so we could see yeah that it's a it's a global company so we have people coming all the way from australia canada uh, well most of europe uh, south africa Argentina, so you know, big distances traveled. Did you guys connect at all with uh, Bitcoin Jungle guys there? We did actually during adopting Bitcoin. Um, Stina, our CEO, went and talked to them uh, just after the speech was finished and told them, you know, we're going to Costa Rica next week, so it would be nice to visit you. So, uh, so they arranged everything. They arranged a full day program for us. So they arranged two buses. So we were like, nice. yeah, yeah, we were like, I don't know. I think in the end we were like 50 people that took this but from Manuel Antonio to this place where we went it's called Dominical it's it was only like 1 hour by the most I think so Is it on the beach or in yeah, the jungle it's, or no it's on the, it's actually on the beach okay. on the beach and don't, I mean we went to this place Dominical first because they have on Fridays they have uh they have a market an artisan market where you could buy goods from local and but actually to be honest mostly foreign craftsmen where you can buy you know like smell you know um, perfumes etc that are handmade and you can everything could be paid with bitcoin which is quite interesting the variety of products was there like food and stuff there yeah. also okay yeah, yeah. yeah. like oh, organic food it was you know to be honest my 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 colleague said that it felt a little like Burning Man, you know, the same <laughs> feeling of I don't know if hippies are forbidden word, but it was it felt kind of you know yeah like very relaxed so yeah. to say yeah yeah, yeah. Huh. so we went there first to this uh, Dominical place where the, this market were, and then they took us also to another place which is called Uvita, uh, where most of the restaurants and actually hotels are now starting to accept Bitcoin as well, and we did, and this is kind of the the things that you don't really think about, you know, because as you know, last year I was, uh, of course, Noor was the the, main, the big boss on the adopting Bitcoin thing, but I was part of the team that was, you know, helping out. And this year I, I helped others as an advisor. But and then you, there are so many logistical things that you think about, and then oh, this is going to go this way, this way. But 
it's really difficult to understand the impact this will have on other people because what they told us, you, you, of course, you had a chat with Lee from uh, from Bitcoin Jungle. Yeah, and that was the first time I'd actually met them uh, in person was at Adopting Bitcoin this year. Well, so. Amazing. Yeah. So he said that uh, he went to Adopting Bitcoin last year. He got inspired but by, by what he saw that was happening here in El Sante. So he decided to do the same thing in Costa Rica. So what he did, he did, you know, he did everything by the manual. He he used uh, the open source solution that Galois provides for the wallet. So they just, you know, readapted it, and that's the wallet they are using in Costa Rica right now. So you know, all of these things, you know, where you're here, you don't th really think that it. Of course, it matters, but it's fantastic to see, you know, how it spreads. Yeah. Know? Well, it was it was fascinating during adopting Bitcoin this year. We had a a dinner with a bunch of different projects and Praia Bitcoin from brazil was there and he was saying that the guys from bitcoin jungle have been helping him with the nfc cards that they're developing and so you have all these different projects working together uh for me for fernando helping us on the technical side i'm not a technical person at all and he's he's very very sharp guy and, and comes from more from that background so it was just so neat to see all these different projects coming together and being able to help each other in different ways and i'm I've just been impressed by the traction that Bitcoin Jungle has, the the number of locations. I haven't been there to see it in person yet, but just the number of locations they have that are accepting Bitcoin. So for you being there, did it seem similar to being in El Zante or did it seem, was it still a little bit less of the businesses that are accepting or what was kind of your take on the prevalence of Bitcoin? I think that... Um they have successfully onboarded most of the high-end restaurants and hotels in the region, uh, which also is a fact here in El Sonte. But I think that it, uh, given the intense intensity of their work, it has happened, of course, a little quicker, you know. Yeah. Because, but it's only because the blueprint has been made already, of course. So. I would say that's the biggest difference, you know, because as during adopting Bitcoin, we can also see the the, the speech from the from the Philippines as well, you know, and they are you know, very active and the way they market and everything. So I would say that's one of the differences. The other difference, and I think this is the main difference, and I touch upon this on the panel I had with uh, Francis Boulot during the during the conference, is that it's driven by several people that are not from. Costa Rica. There's actually not, as far as I could see or meet, not one Costa Rican involved. It's Americans and Europeans, etc. that are, are taking this project uh, further, which is a big difference from here in El Sonte when the main work is being done by, you know, by by the Hope House yeah. guys, which no, are it's all Lawrence. it's all driven by the local team. They're exactly. the ones doing the work. So. Exactly. That's uh, that's a big difference. Yeah. That's a big difference. And that's probably why maybe in Costa Rica it's more the tourists that are spending Bitcoin, where in El Salvador there's a lot of Salvadorans that yeah. are using it in their daily life. Yeah. So, um, but it's you know obviously every project is going to have a different feel to it and and serve a different purpose. But I think they all come together and are pushing this forward. So it for me it's exciting seeing all these things pop up because that's the ethos of Bitcoin for it to be decentralized. It's not controlled by any one entity. It's all these different movements happening together. No, I, I agree with you completely. And I think that one of the biggest epiphanies, and I've told you this before, was uh, when you actually uh, released the white paper here for the Bitcoin Beach white paper. You know, it was fantastic to see the letter that you had drafted at the time and, uh, you know, how everything in it became true you know and it was you know i still get you know chills because and for you it must be even even the same you know because it it even went further than what you had expected because you weren't really saying oh let's also have a law that yeah. <laughs> is a nationwide <laughs> uh, adoption of bitcoin you know it's uh, it's amazing and you see everything that you mentioned there you know that it will become a place where tourists will come it will you know create a financial education for the families, you know, we will be, we will, maybe we can also pay our bills and we are proud actually as a company to have a contributor with that and everything that you line out, you know, everything's there, you know, and it's in a shorter time that uh, expected. And of course, with, uh, with the big bonus of actually becoming, you know, at the country itself, 
became the new country for Bitcoin. Yeah, it's it's funny. I've you know I've been a serial entrepreneur and had a number of different business ventures, and rarely do they actually go how you think <laughs> they will go. You know, you do these business plans just because it's part of what you're you know supposed to do, but most often you go in some totally different direction. But this was the first thing that we actually put on, you know, that I had put on paper that followed the route that, <laughs> so it still seemed like, wow, it's not supposed to work like that. But it, uh, yeah, I guess it was destined to, to happen. Yeah. So it's it's fun now to be able to revisit that. And, and, you know, even when we were putting together the white paper to think back and wow, it, it seems like we've been doing this forever, but it's only been a few years yeah. and we see all this traction. Um, but from the, the very beginning, uh, BitRefill was kind of one of the first touch points with companies that we, we had here because really nobody else was operating here. And I still remember, I can't remember who it was from BitRefill, but I got this urgent message of what is going on in El Salvador? We think we're being hacked and people are spending money for something called free fire what is free you, you guys were asking me what free fire was the the team didn't even know what it was at that time i'm like well that's a popular video game here they're probably taking their strike bonus and buying cloaks or whatever you do in those games uh, skins i think they call them uh, so uh, I don't know if you remember that moment I, or uh, I wasn't actually a part of the company yet, but of course I I've, I've known about it afterwards. And yes, it's completely correct. In May 2021, that's last year, uh, Strike actually did an airdrop of five dollars, you know, to everybody who downloaded the the app, and lots of people used that to buy the currency in this game, Free Fire, which is diamonds, you know. So this is it becomes like a, it has become. Uh, you know, it's it's legend. It has legendary status within our company. And actually, if we see at all the countries where people are buying these diamonds, El Salvador is still the strongest one. I think it's about forty percent of the whole uh, volume around the world is in El Salvador. And not only that, I think that Free Fire is still one of our strongest products as well internally, comparing with other Salvadorian products. So yeah, yeah, Free Fire is important. <laughs> I, I think that, you know, just shows what an important use case it is for people who are unbanked to be able to use Bitcoin. So, you know, obviously them buying something in game is not my favorite thing for people to be spending their Bitcoin on, but that's what they want. And they didn't have that ability to, before. So before they couldn't spend money on those things, even if they're willing to, because they needed a credit card to be able to access that within the game. And the majority of the people in the world do not have credit cards or access to the banking system. So I think this proved just the use case for Bitcoin and specifically for Lightning, I think, because it's you know smaller purchases people are making. And so it makes more sense to do something with low fees. And I think that's going to be looked back on historically as one of the first um, demonstrations of how important Bitcoin would be for micro and kind of smaller payments for in-game apps. And I, I'm a little surprised that the gaming community, they seem to be a little, have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with, with Bitcoin. And in general, I'm, I'm surprised they haven't adopted it more. But I think as Lightning becomes more prevalent, they're going to realize what, what a financial benefit it will be for them to include it. Yeah, how much bigger the market becomes because then everybody has uh, instant access to the skins, you know, or the diamonds or whatever the currency is. Yeah. Well, and I think especially in a game like Free Fire because I, I think it was m more of the people on the lower end of the economic spectrum were their biggest customers and they had no way to monetize that before. And now all of a sudden... Yeah. I imagine El Salvador before was not that important of a market to them, but now it's probably a very important market. Yeah. So it's fun seeing you know companies like BitRefill make that connection and make those things happen. No, and actually it created some entrepreneurship. Uh, we we ran into some of the of the guys that were buying those diamonds. They also said that they bought the diamonds on you know through the strike through BitRefill and then sold them at a premium <laughs> afterwards, <laughs> or actually making more money out of it. You know so. It, it was uh, hilarious watching the 
the incentive uh, when they when Strike was doing that sign up bonus because I think they had a five dollar when you signed up, but they you also got a five dollar referral bonus. Yeah. Exactly. And so there were people that were quitting their jobs and just going <laughs> door to door and getting people to sign up for strike. And they wow. were making, you know, 10 times as much as they had been making in their job. There was there was a car wash in uh, in La Libertad and they were running a free car wash. And so you'd come in and they say, OK, the car wash is free. You just have to download this app and we get the referral bonus. And they made them pay them the five dollars they got, so they were getting ten dollars for each car wash. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> so it was uh, it was funny. I, I I think the strike guys underestimated uh, how big of a push, you know, people being able to get ten dollars mm-hmm. would be in the U.S. You know, for most yeah. people, that's not that big of a deal. But for here, I mean, no. for a lot of people, that's a day's wages. It is so, a day's wages, yeah. Uh, and if you can get a bunch of those on top of each other. Yeah, then uh, you get motivated yeah. to do that, yeah. So that was that was fun. That was a fun time seeing that. <laughs> and then there was all this Bitcoin flowing in the country because they were all receiving their referral bonuses in Bitcoin. So, mm. yeah, that was, uh, that was one of those crazy, uh, you know, fun times to look back on. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, I miss that. <laughs> but um, I, I can't remember where in the deck that we have it. But the thing I think I'm most excited about that you guys are working on is is with the new project uh, with New Story, with allowing people to make their Bitcoin mortgage payments. Um, I don't know how far into that you guys are, or if you have any updates on that. Or we can can we look at the video now? Yeah, can you pull up that video, Andy? I mean, you need to change that to say paid with Bitcoin, but you know, come know, on, no, come I, on now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so this is, uh, that was the training, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, over at Hope House. Yes. Our friend Renato. Yeah. So Re- Renato was actually working for Strike before and then New Story uh, recruited him over to, to head the, um, the housing project and he's, uh, known Renato for a lot of years so I'm, I'm glad that he's working part of that but um yeah, yeah. I don't know have you guys started accepting payments yes. yet or okay yes yes I can tell a little background about the story uh, about the thing as well uh, this is a collaboration that we have with New Story that uh, people are th- this is the first community in the world that can pay their mortgages through Bitcoin specifically. Well, they can use other currency if they want, but it's you know it's Bitcoin. It's focused on yeah. Bitcoin. So it's um, you might know about the project. There, there was a first like I think eight houses were built by the river, and I think they are called Casas del Rio or something like that. And now they they are already they are finished those houses, and yeah. people from the community have already moved in. And now the the project is uh, expanding, and I think it's. 200 more houses are being built on above that, which is called uh, Lomas del Sonte, Sonte Hills, as Renato says. And uh, so what we did was that we started with, it was 125 families. So we started you know, during five Mondays, five consequent Mondays, except one of them when it was raining a lot, <laughs> you might remember. Uh, then um, together with Renato, we had a training where we showed people, you know, this is this is how we are going to, Pay. This is uh, this is these are the wallets that are your disposal, and this is our platform Bit Refill, where you just put in this this and this and this, and then we will register the payment. And uh, I think that you know during the the time I've been working at Bit Refill, which is one and a half year almost now, I think that this has nothing has teach me more about the importance of of, cost, of the customer experience, you know, because it's you know it's. Most of uh, those people, as you know, that you that live in El Sonte, maybe haven't had that much uh, experience using apps before. Maybe WhatsApp, or even know. knowing how to download an app on their phone. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then you figure out how many things, in a way, you know, you filter out, which could be obstacles, you know, for people to actually, uh, you know, to take it full advantage of everything that's actually going on with the country, because. No, in um, in general terms, we know we all know these numbers uh, from the past. Only thirty percent of the population here in Salvador have access to a bank account now. With uh, with the Bitcoin law, 
everybody has an access to a bank account, you know, and there are so many services right now that you can do through Bitcoin. And this is not uh, shilling actually, but you know, you can also pay your bills through yeah. Bitcoin right now. This is not shilling. This is actually true. Uh, maybe a little shilling. I don't know. Well, <laughs> no, go shill away. I mean, that's one of my favorite things that Bitreveal is doing is allowing the, the bill pay yeah. service because that makes it much more convenient than yeah. dollars. It allows people that don't have access to the banking system to pay their accounts online. Yeah, and even, you know, in terms of value, uh, Renato used this example himself, you know, that if they wanted to pay something now, they had to, from El Sonte, go to the bus stop, uh, wait at the bus stop for 40 minutes maybe, then half an hour to the center of La Libertad, wait maybe one hour at the bank, and then do the process back again. So. What it took you like what forty four hours maybe the whole morning the whole afternoon maybe the whole day and and, uh, and the cost of the bus fare yeah you know, exactly which which is not insignificant you know of course and so you have to add that to that so but uh, instead with the tools that we provide you know you can do this you know instantly I think that one of the easiest way to use our our, our platform is together with Strike, actually, because we have this uh, deep link thing, integration thing. So I don't know if we can uh, show that. So this is a this is a top up uh, with Strike, and this. Um, let's see. Is this the Strike video? It, yeah, it, this is uh, first. It's on BitRefill. You have okay. to choose, you know, like what you're going to pay. And this is something that you mentioned before. Actually, that it was difficult to see what you wanted to, you know, yeah. what, what you were paying. But this is uh, we have taken this into account now. Uh, so the great thing about this for people being on top of their phones is they can, if they need phone credit in the middle of the night, they can do it. Where before they have to. The stores were all closed. They were just out of luck. Exactly. So. Exactly. See here, then you just choose the wallet. You choose, in this case, we are going to go with Strike. And then you just open the wallet. And when you open Strike, then it comes up and you have to confirm it. And boom, it's paid. It's 30 seconds yeah. instead of five hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So when you when we when we show this, you know, it's uh, it's uh, different than you know the, for people because they understand. Oh wow, you know. So then, you know, one of the other fantastic experiences I've had is I follow the uh, Chimbera to at least I think two or three different. No, I think it's three schools. Uh, two schools here in La Libertad and one in Chalatenango, uh -huh. where we go, you know, to high school skills and talk. Talk to them about Bitcoin, what opportunities they could have. They, they choose, you know, they choose to study, learn English, etc. But uh, you know, the most gratifying experience, and this is actually what filled me with optimism about Bitcoin adoption in El Salvador, is that in the beginning they are kind of scared, you know, that they are not going to be able to understand how it works. You know this because you yeah, you've, yeah. Been, you've transmitted this a lot of time before. But then when they understand it and they, when, when they do their first transaction to somebody else, then they are, wow. Then they feel like they're a part they're of something. part of it, yeah. A part of it, part of something bigger. Definitely. And then the, the, the fear that you saw in their eyes in the beginning, it just disappears and it becomes confidence, you know? And I think that, you know, do we, I think that most of the companies, and I was going to come back to that, you know, in the, in the case of BitRefill, what we have understood from this is that, you know, to make these payments for the people in El Sonte as few steps as possible, you know? So it's intuitive, native. This is something that we, of course, the customer experience, the goal of the customer experience or the user experience has always been to be as intuitive as possible. But now that we actually talk to people that with no app experience in the past, then we understand that we're going to put up more support, like guides, how to do this, you know, step-by-step -step guides and stuff like that. So, yeah, so this is, I think this is something that almost all the companies are doing here now to try to make this much easier. And, and that's why it's so important for people to be on the ground, to be in those meetings, to see those things. Uh, we just did a, an event that we were working together with Me Premier Bitcoin, and part of their program, they have people erase their wallets and reinstall their seed phrase. And this was the, the first kind of more rural community that they were working in. I mean, I realized a lot of these people don't read and write. And so as they're trying to put their yeah. seed phrase back in, it, it doesn't make any sense to them because they're, they're illiterate. And so it's these sorts of things you realize, okay, maybe this isn't the best 
you know, using Moon Wallet with this type of, of seed phrase is maybe not the best for them. Maybe we need to find another solution for specific communities. But you don't know that unless you get out there and kind of mix it up with the people. So right. that's that's what's so great about El Salvador. And that's why I think it's so important for companies to have a physical presence in El Salvador because they can take what they learn here and take it to the rest of the world, all, all the rest of the developing markets, which I do think are going to be um, at the forefront of Bitcoin adoption before the developed world. And so you can learn those lessons here and replicate the successes you have here everywhere else. And that seems like what BitRefill is doing to a big extent. Yeah, yeah. We want to we want to help out and we also want to learn, you know, with all the humility in the world, you know, to, yeah. to do that. I think the other interesting thing with working closely with the New Story team from the beginning was understanding for them, it wasn't just that this was more convenient for the families that they're working with. This was so much more convenient for them. In the past, they've had to actually have somebody physically on the ground going around and collecting payments. And you're talking, you know, 10, 15 year periods. And so when you're dealing with unbanked populations, it actually becomes very expensive to do collections because the, the monthly payments they're making are, you know, maybe $50 a month. And to keep somebody in that community just for that eats up, a, you know, causes quite yeah, a bit of resources, overhead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for them, they said this wasn't just this, this isn't just a gimmick. It's not just something that's easier for the families. It's something that will actually help them operate more efficiently. Yeah, it's the centralizing, you know, the centralizing the operation, which is you know the aim of Bitcoin at all. And I can also confirm that um, the first payment was now due in the middle of November, and I would uh, I would guesstimate that at least ninety five percent of the families have made the first payment. Nice. Actually, yeah, nice. I can I can actually confirm that because I've I've seen the you know the numbers. So which is fantastic. Yeah, and it's, a, it's a it's a success. You know, and when I mean success, it's a success that they were actually able to. You yeah, know, and that yeah. Everything they're able. Out. They're yeah. able, and I mean, ninety five percent payment for a program like that is is good, anyways. But um, that shows that you know making it easier for them makes them more likely to make their payments. Yeah. And so yeah. And the and the difficult one was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. The second time is going to be like click, you know. <laughs> no, I think you're going to see this type system used by NGOs around the world because it just just makes so much more sense. Yeah. Um, and also this starts here in El Salvador. Yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. No, I I I think people underestimate how important it is to have companies like BitRefill that kind of play that niche of bringing people together of providing the platform, you know, Obviously, you guys aren't aren't in the housing business and you're not paying mortgage payments, but you're able to facilitate those things coming together. And I was mentioning to you earlier, um, every project that I've talked to, and that's one of our big focuses now is trying to help other Bitcoin circular economies around the world, um, help them just learn from from what we've learned and and help share resources. But all of them mention the role that BitRefill is, is playing and how important that is, even as they're going out and talking to people about Bitcoin of, hey, this can make your life more convenient. You can put credit on your phone in the middle of the night. You can pay your bills without having to go in places. Things that I think you know Americans or people from the developed world underestimate how important those things are because the banking system works for us but yeah, most of these people don't have that we take it for granted yeah so i i've heard a couple of people push back of like well bit refills not really creating <laughs> a circular economy because you know then they're cashing that out and but they don't understand you need these bridges that creates one more link one more reason for people to want to accept bitcoin at their store because yes please pay me in Bitcoin so I can pay my mortgage payment, so I can pay my phone bill. And so that is how you create circular economies. It's one step at a time. And I would say BitRefill has done more to encourage living on Bitcoin than probably any other country or company out there. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about this cashing out part because we try to keep as much as possible, if I understand correctly. I don't, it feels kind of unfair, but I will, I, will, <laughs> I will refute that statement if I meet the person uh, personally. Yeah, the, the general mission of BitRefill is to create a, a circular economy. And in that sense, as we mentioned, El Salvador is a, 
it's a fantastic opportunity for us to do and try out different things. And uh, if we can see the the last photo, maybe. Um, no, well, this is uh, th something that we ran at the airport in August for the for the August vacations. Okay. And this is uh, this was our, our little banner. Um, we learned some things since then. Number one, that uh, the QR code shouldn't be as small. <laughs> for example, the next one that we did now for Alopen Bitcoin was a little better. But there are several elements here. Like number one. Uh, you can see that uh, you have the the bird, which is a national bird. So we try to connect, you know, directly to the uh, to El Salvador, and we try to do that actively, actually by engaging uh, local artists to help us out with different things. You know, the mural we have at uh, Hope House, yeah. for example, it was made by one at the time. She was the was one of the most in demand artists. Uh, of El Salvador, her name is Lucrecia Chinchilla. She's uh, she's doing all projects now. She's not painting anymore, but it for us it was a, a fantastic way to you know to have some presence. We did a we did a campaign uh, last year. Well, no, it was this year actually. We was called Save the Bankers. I don't know if you had the opportunity to see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That <laughs> it, was pretty funny. <laughs> it was. We had uh, during adopting. We filmed it uh, last year during adopting Bitcoin, and this was filmed by one of the most prominent uh, film directors of El Salvador. His name is. Javier Caffey, and he has done, I don't know if you've seen it, he has done this beautiful documentary about El Salvador, which is called uh, Cuatro Puntos Cardinales, which is, uh, well, Cuatro Puntos Cardinales is the four uh, directions in the compass, you know, so it's north, north, east, west, and south. And so he follows uh, four people in El Salvador, and actually the fourth one, the one in the south, um, is the guy that runs... Uh, the Esencia Nativa. Okay. So that's awesome. where it's filmed, actually. So yeah. I, I really recommend it. The one one of the persons is a coffee, you know, um, a coffee producer. The second one is a music musician. I'm sorry. The third one is a is a handicraft uh, woman that works in La Palma. And then finally, it's with uh, with uh, Novoa. His name is Eric Novoa. I don't remember. Well, Alex. Alex, Alex Novoa. Novoa. Alex yeah, Novoa. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. And uh, if we can go back to the picture, sorry. <laughs> So this is this is an important part because we are actually working on that. We have we are we have been sponsoring all of all so many cultural things as we can, you know, because we really want to help out with that. Yeah. And and but besides that, I think that the most important part of this is, you know, the what we wanted to transmit because this is actually what we are learning from all this interaction that we have with people like for example in El Sonte which and it says la manera más fácil de pagar tus facturas it's it, it really means the easiest way to pay your bills and i think that you know i think that it actually is you know so this and this is what we aim at you know to not be like the best like crypto solution but to actually be the best solution overall because that's the, that's what we have to aim at to to have a product that's you know available it has to, to be better than other options it, it has, has to be to better be. than the credit cards it has to be more accessible than the bank and that's what i tell people it's not good enough to just have a bitcoin solution it has to to yeah. work better yeah and so. so the as so going back to El Salvador all the time, these are the things that we are learning, how to improve on everything and how to see. And going back to the circular economy argument, how we're helping people out around the world, actually Bitrefill has been operating since the end of 2014, beginning of 2015. And it actually started as um, a solution to pay top ups with different crypto solutions, Bitcoin and other solutions. You know, so that's that's the and that's uh, one of the products that you know most of the unbanked need yeah. you know so in a way i can understand why the other you know the other bitcoin uh, projects around the world this is how they can use bitrefill in a very easy way all over the world because this we provide still you know all over the world well ev everybody needs to be able to do that and that's something i think a lot of americans don't really understand because most people have monthly bills yeah. that they just pay. But for most of the world, they have these prepaid phones that if you haven't paid up credit, you you can't call anybody or no. you can't use the internet. And so if that happens in the middle of the night, usually you have to go to a store and pay them in cash and have them put more credit on. But with this now, people can, doesn't matter where they are, they can just add more credit to their phone. Exactly. And so it's a, it's a huge um, logistical advantage to using cash. Yeah. yeah I agree. <laughs> so, 
no, super excited to see that being expanded. We had uh, um, Kahatsu, I always butcher his name, but from <laughs> Manchankura, and it, he was talking about even on their project of using feature phones to send Bitcoin across Africa, that the primary thing people were using that Bitcoin for was using BitRefill to purchase air top ups for their phone or um, other. I think that was primarily what they were using BitRefill for was, but he said that was really driving the success of their product was the fact that they could connect to BitRefill and have that direct access. Otherwise, it wouldn't as, just wouldn't be as useful for people to have. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, I, I, I saw his uh, speech during Adopting Bitcoin and he actually mentioned that, you know, what do you use your for what do you use your uh, uh, bitcoins or crypto for? He said, oh, Bitcoin, I'm sorry. I, what do you use your Bitcoin? I'm sorry. I'm good. That's going to be censored, I guess. <laughs> what do you use your Bitcoin for? And, and then he asked the audience, you know, and everybody was like, oh, and he was like, put it up just like that. Bit revealed. So it was, you know, yeah. no, I said, it's uh, amazing to see the importance that the product has and this is difficult to see you know even from el salvador how this is playing out you know in most regions of the world yeah mm -hmm. i know we got to spend some time together in buenos aires uh, last month uh, for the libitconf down there what i'm just curious of what you guys are seeing in argentina i mean that's a country going through you know a really continual crisis of their currency and so are you guys seeing people use um, bit refill in different ways there, or is it kind of similar to everywhere else? Um, Argentina is actually a pretty interesting example because you know one of the, I think that during the during the la during the spring, I was engaged in doing podcasts with uh, bit refill where we were, where we were interviewing people all over Latin America, and then it struck me how you know the Latin Americans kind of adapt to different situations and uh, one of the things we were seeing is that for example in Argentina or Venezuela or even Cuba where the currency currently suffers devaluation then the what we always talk about you know the the it's hyperinflation times 1 million you know that yeah. what what they are facing you know for us you know it, that in El Salvador we use the dollar, so we don't see that inflation of the same sense in the same sense maybe, and uh, it's a you know, somewhat stable currency in a way, you know, taking away take, taking well, no matter the inflation or whatever, you know. So in a way, if the adoption in El Salvador of Bitcoin it competes with the dollar as an as an alternative in a way, which is not obvious why. There should be a switch, especially not with the current market, yeah. you know. Uh, but in other countries like Argentina, the bit Bitcoin becomes like one of the only alternatives people have to actually storage value, you know, in a way. And in that sense, of course, lots of many of the companies that are most innovative in this sense, uh, well, at least some are from Argentina, you know, the Moon Wallet is one of the most used yeah. wallets and it's Argentinian, which is fantastic, you know, and there are several options and there's so, and, but on the other hand, we see companies like Lemon, I think it's called Lemon app or something like that. Lemon pay, I think. Lemon pay or Lemon cash, yeah. something like that. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Lemon guys. Uh, but they recently had to, the, the CEO had to go out on Twitter saying that, you know, they had to lay off 30% of their staff as well, you know, so it's a, it's a balanced thing. You know, so yeah, but we see we see some uh, some development in Argentina as well, but it's difficult to keep up with the prices as it has to be yeah. priced in pesos. You know, so it's so yeah, so it's kind of uh, yeah, it's it has it's both. Do you see more stablecoin usage there? Yes. Okay. Yes, I think that in the end, you know, decentralized stable coins are kind of going to guarantee some more financial yeah. I mean inclusion. I could see Tether playing a big role in yeah. a place like Argentina where where you know the reality is some people want bitcoin but a lot of people just want access to dollars yeah. and so yeah. if they can do that through something like Tether uh that that would make sense and yeah. it, and it gives them the the online banking rails you know same advantages so that makes exactly. sense Exactly Huh mm. Well I'm curious uh of you being Salvadoran and what your 
viewers of the country since they've adopted Bitcoin. You've obviously seen a lot of the negative press that's come out yeah. and talked about how it's been a disaster and because only 20% of the people are using it, that's a failure. So um, just curious yeah. as your perspective on the adoption of Bitcoin, how it's been for the country, and then just how you see the country now versus how you saw it four or five years ago. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, well, starting with the uh, uh, adoption of Bitcoin, I, I think 25% is a huge number. I really don't think it's low. You know, you're, you, how, how is the Bitcoin adoption in other countries? Yeah. You know, it's That's like, what what, I tell people. What it's, it's, it's the highest country in the world with Bitcoin adoption. And, yeah. and three or four years ago, it was one of the lowest. Yeah, so. no, 25% that, that actually I saw, I saw one of the surveys and it said that at least 25% of the people had made one uh, Bitcoin transaction. That's huge, yeah. you know? So I don't really see that as a failure another thing that i read a lot about and you know i have of course had uh, not so good experience myself with uh, with the chivo app but actually i said this during the during my panel in the, during adopting bitcoin that it actually has improved a lot you have to give credit for that i i think that and this is kind of a tip you know that you they should do a relaunch and rebrand it and you know because now it kind of works you know and it's uh, it, i feel like a little father that's proud saying that but you know it's a uh, it's it's improved a lot you know yeah. and of course if the first thing that you do is you download chivo and you try to send bitcoin to another person and they get stuck in El Salvador, as you say, ten dollars, you know, it's a lot. You're not going to do it again. You yeah. Know? So, uh, so, but now I, th I, I think that most of the bugs have been fixed now. So it really kind of works, you know. So I don't know. And to give another example, just going back to the Bitcoin jungle example, you know, it's of course the Bitcoin adoption. Let's not. You, we cannot really say that. You know that the. The Bitcoin beach has something, you know, it, it didn't come because of the law yeah. or anything. Yeah. But what's going on in El Sante is obviously inspiring many other communities to do the same thing. So that's, you know, that, that kind of insp that inspiration factor, that's uh, unseen of in the past as well. So I don't know what, how a success would look like you know i i really don't that, know it's that, a country that's inspiring other countries to do the same thing we have the first community in the world that's paying their mortgages through bitcoin and this could happen as you say many other ngos it will solve mm, lots of their problems yeah. because we don't think about the logistics that as you were saying that implies to have somebody receiving the money and maybe the security that that you know the security aspect of that of people carrying all the mortgages etc and people not having to go somewhere but just waking up and now oh, today is your payment and boom you know it's uh i don't know how it can be a failure from well and that's being coming out of el salvador el salvador is the one driving that innovation that's what you know nobody would have thought that would be coming out of here a few years right. ago so exactly yeah. and we also have companies salvadoran companies i've, I've guessed that you've seen these k1 uh, machines yeah yeah, yeah. you know it's, fan it's it's fantastic you know and now the elgar the the ceo of k1 he has now now and because the one of the limitations that they, they know this is that you can only put coins into it and that you know if you're going to pay the mortgage of 260 dollars you cannot really stand yeah, there you know yeah. doing that 1000 times but now they're going to have also you know uh, the uh, the bill uh, machines that accept bills, which is going to you know, it's going to be a complete game changer. This is a Salvadorian product that has a huge potential overseas. You know, it's uh, it's amazing and it works perfectly. You know, so and we have this other uh, my other friend Guillermo Dito Banks, which is constantly providing different solutions. Now, I mean, you might know this. He has uh, these gift cards of Bitcoin that he sells everywhere so you know i didn't realize that no yes, gift so, card yeah so you okay. can buy like a physical gift card and then it has a code that you scratch off and you just enter it into your wallet and boom you have the bitcoin so that those are the things that's going to you yeah. know that they're going to push adoption and this is something that he can have here or anywhere else in the world you know so i think that you know the the level of innovation that this is generating the level of technology that's coming into the country because of this you know it's this is not something that's going to happen you know 
from one day to the other. Last week, I was listening to a podcast that uh, Sergey, our CEO that you met, of course, uh, uh -huh. had in Swedish uh, about uh, adoption of Bitcoin in El Salvador specifically. And uh, some background in Sweden, maybe, I don't know, eight, nine years ago, a new application, a new app was introduced. It was called Swish, which it was, it was an app that made it possible to send money between different bank accounts only using the phone number, you know? So it, and it was instantly, you know? So it was a, it's a perfect solution. And actually I, I, I haven't lived in Sweden for a long time, so the Swedes will have to forgive me for this claim, but it's one of the things that have kind of pushed the society to becoming more and more cashless. I already know that before I left Sweden in 2018, 40% of the stores in the center of Stockholm didn't accept cash anymore. They were like, you know, this is our number. We only accept switch, you know, because it was a, and there, I guess there's no law that requires that. I'm not thinking about it. Now, you know, now that we're in here thinking about all the laws, then you have to think, oh, is that legal? But I guess, I guess there is nothing that uh, obliges them to accept uh, cash. But, but this, even if this is a brilliant solution that solves many problems as well, it's, uh, it didn't happen overnight. It took yeah. one, two, three years until it became, you know, something before the long tail became the general public, you know. So these are things that are going to take time. And this is in Sweden when, where there is, you know, some app experience we, one would assume. But here we're starting, you know, from in many ways from from zero, we can say that. And I was going to come back to that as well, that during the podcast, where I, one of the things that I realized looking at the different projects in Latin America is that the projects are being built depending on the needs of the different countries. And what you see, what we have seen in El Salvador is the need for education. And that's where projects like Mi Primer Bitcoin comes in, where Toro goes there, that you are, I'm probably sure you know about them as yeah. well, you know. so then it's the education from itself that comes from the ground and then it starts, you know, something starts, you know, and of course the efforts of Bitcoin Beat, you know, where I, or hope as, you know, I, I said, I had the privilege to join Roman on a few occasions and, you know, this is one of the factors I have to repeat that, you know, that fills me with optimism is the change in, you know, in the look of the, of the young people when they understand how it works and also how it makes them feel mostly, you know. We've seen locally, I mean, nobody used to go to university from the community. Now there's, you know, a busload of kids going to university. And a lot of that just comes from them feeling like, wow, I can do this. I can participate in these global opportunities. I can go on to school to, you know, start my own company or to take a job in one of these Bitcoin companies that pays much better than what was previously available so that's fantastic it's really opening their eyes for the first time and causing them to dream about the future and for a lot of them i think it's made the difference between them choosing to stay in el salvador versus previously for a lot of them the the best option was to go illegally to the u.s where yeah. now they feel like no i can build a future here all the americans and canadians and europeans are flooding into el salvador so yeah which is must, which is, must be the place true. to be yeah it's true no and uh uh, finishing the thought about um, um, Bitcoin adoption, I think some of the press also point out that, you know, uh, that it, it's, they seem to point out that it should be a failure of the government in some sense. And, you know, the government is not even supposed to, supposed to play a role when it comes to Bitcoin. You know, if, uh, if in a perfect Bitcoin world, there would kind of be no government, yeah. you know. So it's kind of up to, and I think that most of uh, the Salvadorian companies, I, I think, of course, we are an international company, but we have a local entity here as well. So I, and I'm Salvadorian, you know, so I count us as one of the local companies in one sense as well. I think that we, what we have understood is that it is up to us. Like in real life, it's up to the companies, to the NGOs, to the individuals, to actually push for this so so it makes a difference it's not up to you know some entity or whatever some governmental entity to push for the adoption it's up to because it has to be optional of course and and we're seeing that we're seeing companies yeah bitcoin companies but not just bitcoin companies tech companies real estate companies i, I don't know if the microphones are picking up the construction in the back here but construction is booming yeah. in el salvador i mean it is I think the GDP numbers for 2022 are going to blow the estimates out of the water. I really do. Yeah, hopefully. Um, because everywhere you look, there's progress, there's development, there's good things happening. Um, 
So yeah, that's why I always tell people, hey, don't believe what you read. Come here and then make a judgment for yourself. Talk to the people, see what's happening in the country. Go try to use Bitcoin in places and, and see if, if it's working or if it's not. Yeah, and everybody that comes here leaves uh, in love with the country. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if they leave. A <laughs> if lot they of, leave. A lot That's actually true. They don't leave. That's actually true. Uh, That's actually true. I hear about people that have been here for four days and they are they just stay here. No, I, I know countless people. In fact, uh, I was just talking with Andy. They have a... Uh, our, our tech guy, he has a, a rental, some rental properties here. And um, he said that people will come for a few days and they're like, uh, can I get another week? Can I get another week? Because they don't want to leave. It's just so beautiful and so much better than they were expecting. So oh, fantastic to uh, hear. Yeah. Well, before we wrap up, uh, how can people follow you or BitRefill or what you guys are doing? What's the best way? Uh, if you have any recommendations for products for them to try that you guys uh, have or any updates or announcements on when they'll be able to use BitRefill <laughs> uh, to make payments, build payments like we can here in El Salvador. Have you, have you rolled that out in the U.S. yet? Or uh? Uh, We are still working on rolling it out in other countries okay. uh, at the moment, actually. Because so El Salvador is leading the way there. Yeah, yeah, El Salvador is the only place where we have build payments, actually. So it's fantastic. No, it is actually. It is actually. And it is the, the volume was surprising. We double our volume here. Like yeah, we double our volume with that product as well. Wow. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it was it and the and the how it you know went from just a little amount in the beginning, it went up, you know, a lot, you know. So it's it's been a, without a doubt. What, was that even on your guys' roadmap before, or was that something that was instigated because of no, that was that was because of the Bitcoin law. Okay, yeah, that awesome. was that was you know, and the law came in June, and we rolled out we rolled this out in November. Sergey, our CEO, announced this on adopting Bitcoin last year, you know, and it was like in, even for the company, and it's just giving us this incredible experience that we now can use in many other countries. Um, well, I don't think we actually have some as a company global wise. I don't. I wouldn't dare to make any big announcements right <laughs> now actually not because of secrecy but i think that we are i think that we are trying to first of all i have to say that we are this is the for this is the fourth crypto winter of the company you know that this is the first time that we've been involved in that well that we are being in a crypto winter and uh, so this has created some experience of course and we are i think that we are prepared for that hopefully uh, this is uh, one of the things that maybe is important. Another thing is that what we are now trying to focus on is actually to reinforce the user experience. And this also comes from what, you know, in part because of some of the things that we have, you know, seen here. So, yeah. No, I mean, I love the fact that BitRefill hired somebody to be in charge of El Salvador and knew the importance of having somebody on the ground to, to see that happen. Um, so, I mean, that's really makes a difference for the companies that develop products that people want and companies that develop products they think people should want. And yeah. BitRefill does a very good job of actually meeting the people's needs. So that's what, that's what I love about the, the app and the experience. Um, okay, thank you. So can people follow you on Twitter or what's the... They can, f yeah, of course. I'm not that interested on Twitter, but... Uh, uh, Maybe you'll make some uh, groundbreaking announcements. Uh. <laughs> well, BitRefill, they can follow just, you know, at uh, the Twitter handle and the Instagram handle is at BitRefill, just, just like that. Okay. Uh, so that's... Uh, no, that's a way to start. They can follow me, of course, if they want. It's uh, Rod Costas with a C, um, if they want. But I don't. I'm not that. You know, I'm not that uh, Twitter active. Actually, I do some <laughs> retweets about what we do in the company, but I'm not really. You know, <laughs> well, awesome. Well, we appreciate all the the work that that you guys are doing here in El Salvador, and and I love the fact that you know this is your home country, and so you have more incentive than anybody to want to see it succeed. Yeah, so. no, that's actually true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll have to circle back in a few months and see uh, see what else you guys are rolling out here to push this forward. Uh, it will be interesting actually to see the how the new story project is developing. That's one of the main things that we want to actually see, you know, to because and see if it grows and yeah. if it's inspire other uh, NGOs, as you said, to do the same thing. That's one of the things that it's very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you spending your afternoon <laughs> with me, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll catch up again in a few months, and uh, we can get some uh, updates on the construction on that project too. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
All right. Thank you, Mike. Thanks.